God is good. And, um, you know, I don't take it lightly uh, to be up here. Um, honestly, never thought I'd even be up here, to be honest with you. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, just God, everything he's done for me in my life. And uh, so I have a two-point message. And uh, I'm going to start with prayer. Okay, um, I'm just I'm gonna pray right now. So, uh, Father Heaven, I just want to thank you, God, for allowing us to be here, God. I pray, Lord, that you use me, God, and you know, empty me of myself, God, and just fill me with you, God. Let your words be, uh, you know, spoken out of my mouth, God. And um, you know, I just plead the blood for us, you know, uh, God, help this message to help whoever needs to help, Lord, and just speak to everybody here. And uh, I just thank you, God, for your goodness. I thank you, God, for being faithful to me, God, when I wasn't faithful to you. And I thank you, God, for being faithful to all of us, Lord. Yeah. Um, you know, when we're not faithful to you, God. And, and, and I pray this in uh, Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to start. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be reading out of the um, Psalms. I'm going to be reading Psalms 42. So if you could uh, stand for the honor of reading the word of God. All right. I'm going to start with verse 1. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I, I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the health of my countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites and from the hill Mazar. All right, that's it. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, you can sit down. Uh, so I have a two-point message, and the title of the, of the message is A Hope That Remains. Okay, um... In this, in, this, in this passage, commentators believe that this was written by David while he was either running from King Saul or he was running from his son Absalom. And in these, either scenario, we could apply these to our lives because the things that we go through at times, either God sent them or we made a mistake and God allowed what, you know, what we could be dealing with because of the mistakes that we have made, right? And, but... At the end of the day, in verse 5, David, he's, he's hoping in God's countenance. So I was wondering what the word countenance meant. I'm like, what, is the, what does that mean? So I looked it up on Google and it said facial expression. And I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense. I'm like, why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his facial expression. I was like, it doesn't even make any sense to me. So... I went into the uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and I looked it up some more. And one, another meaning for countenance is kindness, favor, and goodwill. So when you see right here David, while he's going through what he's going through, whether he's running from King Saul, I mean, you talk about a hopeless situation that you know, he's going through where his own father-in-law wants to kill him. I mean, he loved King Saul. He loved him. He, he loved his son. I mean, you know... He would never lay hands on the king, right, because he loved him so much. And it was a hopeless situation for him. But even in the, in the midst of hopeless situations, you find that you can hold on to God's countenance. In those, in those times, you can hold on to God's kindness and his favor and his goodwill towards you. Because as a believer, as a child of the, of the living God, he loves you and he's your father and he cares about you. And, you know... It's unfortunate the things that we go through at times, whether it's God sent it or we allowed it, right? But God will use those things for our good. Yeah. So point one is hoping in God's countenance. I pretty much already said that. But, um, all right, so in either scenario, right, whether, you know, is sent from God or you allowed it, um, David went... <sighs> David knew that God would be faithful to him regardless of the situation, whether it was God sent or because of himself, because God is faithful and we can count on his faithfulness regardless of whatever it is that we're going through. And 
In the midst of hopeless situations, you can be sure that there is always hope in God as a believer because he works all things together for your good. It says in Romans 8, 28, you don't have to turn there, but um, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So as a, as a born again believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, we have a hope that we can hold on to that even in the midst of the things that we go through, God is working it for our good. He knows what's best for us, right? So even if it's something that you know, I'm, I'm hoping in or you're hoping in and, and, and it doesn't come to fruition the way that we're hoping it does or it doesn't come to pass in the timing that we hope it does or whatever the scenario is for you that you're hoping in or whatever it is, right? God knows. God hears you when you pray. He hears the, 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 the moaning of your heart when you're like, God, I'm, I'm hoping for this, but this hasn't changed. Or, you know, God, I'm desiring this, but yet you're not meeting my, my requirements in the time frame that I'm expecting them, right? And you got to understand when, when you're in that hopeless or, or, or desperate situation that you find yourself in, God's working it for your good. Regardless of whatever it is that you're going through, God will work it for your good. But you have to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. That's first and foremost. The, the, if you don't got Christ, your situation is very hopeless. I'm just going to be honest with you. So thank God for, for just being able to even be saved, you know, to, to have this hope. Um, uh, you know, in my own life, just certain things that I have gone through where it was hopeless. I felt hopeless. I was discouraged. I was defeated. And then I was just, just, it was a really bad situation for me. And God, he knew what, he knew exactly what I needed to get a hold of me to really get to change my life in order to, to do something in me. And I'm not, I'm not anything. God is, by the grace of God, I am even in this church right now to even be in this pulpit. So I praise God for that. Um, and I want to say in, in Psalms 94, 17, and 19, if you could turn with me there. Okay. It says... Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. Right? And, and the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. So when you're in those hopeless situations and you feel like you're about to fall over the edge and your foot's slipping and you're like, God, I can't go on anymore. This is too much for me. You know, God, um... I know you're working this out for my good, but it doesn't feel good for me. And, and, and God, this situation looks hopeless, and I don't even know how I'm going to move on another day. I don't know how I'm going to go on another hour. God, where are you? I, I don't know where you are. And in those situations, you can find that God will not let your foot slip if you remain in him. Yeah. If you remain in him and you put your, your, your firm foundation in Christ, when you feel like you're about to slip, God will never let you slip. Yeah. The only time that we slip is when we let go of his hand, yeah. right? So you got to hold on to his hand when you're going through things that you don't like or, or just any kind of circumstance that you're going through in your life. And it says in Hebrews, you don't have to turn with me there, Hebrews 6.19 Bear with me a second. Well, I actually thought I knew where Hebrews would be at at this point, but I guess. <laughs> All right, yeah, Hebrews, here we go. Praise God. All right, 619, and it says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into, in, into uh, enter, wait, entereth into that within the veil. So God is our anchor, Right? When your situations look hopeless, he is your anchor who is steadfast. Yeah. He's steadfast and he's sure and you can trust in him and you can trust in him to be your anchor when, you, when your situations are just dire. 
right? And we all go through them, right? We're all believers, non-believers, we all go through them. But the hope that we have is that when we're in these situations, Christ is with us. Yeah. And Christ will keep us going. By the grace of God, you get to keep going, right? So the thing is you got to hold on to Christ. You put your hope in anything else but Christ, your situation's hopeless. Even as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't, if you don't put your firm foundation in God, your foundation is, is, is on the sand. I mean, and uh, so point number two, when David was going through what he was going through, whether running from King Saul or running from his son Absalom, he remembered God's promises. Yeah, yeah, amen. Right? So David remembered God's promises, whether, whether running from King Saul or Absalom. And in Psalms, you don't have to turn me there, Psalms 89 20 and 21. Let's see. Okay. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. When David was going through this, whether running from Saul or his own son, he remembered God's promises to him that he would be there. He would strengthen him. He would be everything that he would need, right? Not his circumstances, not his situation, not whatever it was he was dealing with. He put his firm foundation in God, yeah. right? And he held on to the promises, right? As believers, we have promises that we can hold on to, but the thing is, is that we have to we got to look for them. we got to find them, right? Hold on to them. Because if you don't, the enemy, he'll come and he'll just trip you up. Yeah. Oh, God, he loves you, but he's letting you go through this? Oh, God, he loves you, right? He, he really loves you? Okay, yeah, sure he does. But when you hold on to them promises, right. yeah. when them thoughts come into your mind, yeah. and... Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down thoughts, uh, casting down uh, imaginations and, and, and um, what's that? Casting down imagination, every high thing that's all itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I probably butchered that. But you got to cast those thoughts down when they come. And you got to remember in God's promises. In uh, Psalms 55, 22, these are just a few of them. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, he shall sustain thee, he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Psalms 138, 8. Uh, uh, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me, right? Whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever you're concerned about, God will perfect that in you. He has a purpose and a reason for what you're going through or whatever it is that you're hoping in. If he hasn't met your time frame or if he hasn't met what you're desiring or your needs or whatever it is, you can rest that God has a reason for it and he's doing something in you because he loves you, right? Yeah. right? 1 Peter 5, 7 Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Your father cares about you, Amen. and he loves you. And, 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 you know, as believers, we struggle with believing that. I know I do. Let's be honest. I do at times. You know, my dad wasn't in my life, so I never had that father figure, and some of us can relate to that, but I, I didn't have that. So, you know, uh, I try to just, okay, God, you're my heavenly father, so help me to know you like the father that I never had, right? To, to teach me. Help me. Um, in in um, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. That's another promise. You be careful for nothing, even when you are careful. And you're like, well, God, how do I be careful for nothing? That doesn't even make sense. Look at what's going on around me. Look at the things that I'm dealing with. How do I be careful for nothing? But in those moments, start being thankful. Hey, God, you know what? I see this is what's going on in my life, but you know what? Thank you that I'm alive. Thank you that I'm saved and I'm not on my way to hell. Thank you that I have a family. Thank you I have a job. Thank you. Whatever your situation is, you can always find something to be thankful in. Always can find something to be thankful. There's no excuse. You can always find something to be thankful in. And, and, and if you, you get discouraged, get, a, get up on someone else. Hey, but thank you, God, for so-and-so. So, you know, if they're being an encouragement to you or whatever the situation is, um, you know, I found myself, uh, 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 was, you know, I was talking to somebody and, and, and I found myself being discouraged about some things. And I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with this. Or I'm dealing with that. And, and, and I thought about them. And I said, hey, you know what? If God helped them, I know God can help me. God can do it. I know he can. Right? 
Um, in Isaiah 26, 3, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee, right? You trust in the Lord. Your mind, you will have the peace when you're going through these circumstances. You think David went through all these things and he didn't hold on to God's promises? You think he went through these things and didn't hold on, having hope in the Lord, the one true living God that we have? We have God, the one true living God. Other people out here that, you know, that don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, don't have a personal relationship with they don't have that. And, you know, and, and we go through things, but we have a hope. We have a hope that is everlasting, that is steadfast, that is an anchor for our souls, right? So in Isaiah, you don't have to turn there, Isaiah 43, 2 and 3. This is a good one. This is a really good one right here. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Right? He's our Savior. And he promises that no matter what it is that we go through, he will always be with us, just like the three men that were in the... The, the flame, they said that, oh, I saw the fourth. It was Christ, right? When you're going through those things, God is with you. God will carry you through. And at some times, he will literally carry you because it's the grace of God that will get you to get through to the other side. But you got, you got to hold his hand firmly. If you let go, you want, you want to go back to your old life? I mean, seriously, you want, you want to go back to how you used to live if you've been changed by God? I remember when, when I was going through what I was going through, and I did go back. And it was hopeless. And I remember many nights hoping and, 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 man, looking for things to fill that void in my life that I thought I could fill myself. And, and it was all empty. And it was brokenness. And it was despair and hopelessness. And, and I was like, and I knew, I knew, I knew God. I'm like, what in the world? What am I doing? What am I doing? God. And I thank God for men of God who reached out to me and got a hold of me, helped me, you know, that God used in those times, made me reconsider some stuff on, hey, you know what? If I keep going down this path, it's going to lead me towards destruction. Right. What hope would my girls have if I would have just completely gave up and quit? Right. right? Well, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't even be in this poll, but I, I, to be honest, I don't even know where I'd be right now, honestly. And I thank God that he allowed what he allowed to get a hold of me to change me. Right. Not that anything's good in me, because I'm not lifting myself up, but I am very thankful to God that he got a hold of me when he did, because I remembered the life I had when I didn't have him as my anchor, when I didn't keep him as my steadfast hope, and it was a hopeless situation. Right. And I remember many nights, many nights crying myself to sleep, and God was there. Amen. Many times people would send me scripture. Many times people would uh, uh, call me. And, I, and I'm talking at the times when I needed it the most, when the Lord knew I needed it the most and he kept me going. Even when my motives maybe weren't 100% where, where they should have been, where I thought. But I'll tell you this, one thing I have found out now, living for the Lord now, everything I have hoped in, even though there are certain things I am hoping for and desiring for, whatever, and they're not coming to fruition the timing that I'd like or maybe the way I'd like, right? At the end of the day, if Christ isn't at the center of that, it's hopeless. Christ has to be at the center of all of our hopes and all of our desires and all the things that we go through. It's like what Solomon said, it's vain. It's vain, it's meaningless. If Christ isn't at the center, even as a believer, right? I mean, we could go uh, uh, wanting money, or, or uh, relationships, or cars, or jobs, and all these things. But if Christ isn't at the center, you're still going to feel empty. Yeah. That, those things ain't going to fill you. Yeah. Only Christ can fill you. Amen. It says in um, Romans 15, 13. It says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. God, God is the one that will get you through your circumstances. Now, I'm going to end with these two, I'm going to end with these two uh, 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 verses. 
Um, in Psalm 62, 5, if you could turn with me there. Okay. Um, my soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. When David was going through the things that he was going through, his expectation was God. When your expectation isn't God, your expectations will let you down. You got to remember that no matter what it is that you're, you know, wanting. If your expectation isn't in God, what expectation do you have? Your expectations will let you down and fail you. And you got to remember that. When things don't go your way, when things don't go the way you're hoping or the way you're expecting, that's when your expectation first and foremost should be Christ. So when those times do come, your firm foundation is in Christ. So those things won't get you to slip off the deep end, right? You hold on. You hold on. In Psalms 42.11, you don't have to turn there. You see that David, in this situation he was dealing with, when running from King Saul or from Absalom, says, Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Now, this is where the countenance comes in as facial expression. You see, when David put his expectations in God, his, his countenance changed. Because he had a hope in Christ. He had a hope in God that only God can give you. And that's where we have to find ourselves at. When we're down in the dumps, when we're down and out, we got to remember, hey, this is, this is what it's looking like, but God, I know you're with me. I know you care about me. I know that you love me. And I know you're going to keep me. He's like, Cast thy burden upon the Lord. He shall sustain me. He will sustain you. Yeah. Right? And I'm going to end with this. Is your hope centered in Christ? Is your hope centered in Christ? Thank you.